and I'm all excited about living things. And that's really what we're learning about in Big Group is things that are alive. Animals, plants, rocks, not rocks. No, 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 rocks are not alive. Just in case you're the one person who thought that, they're, they're non-living. But we'll, we'll talk about non-living things in Big Group, so I'm not, I'm not worried. We're gonna sing some songs right now, and the first song that I wanna sing with you guys is called The Three Features of Living Things. And so here it goes. Living things change and grow, they reproduce, don't you know? They respond to light and heat. Living things are really neat. Non-living things cannot grow, they can't reproduce. That I know, they do not respond to light and heat. Non-living things are not so neat. So, living things do all those three characteristics, change and grow, reproduce, respond to light and heat. Non-living things just can't. And I tried to be as boring as I could when I sang that part, but I'm still living because I can still do all the things living things can do. Okay. The next one is called Living Things Communicate. All living things communicate, they share information. They send, collect, collect, respond to signals with their senses. Our senses are our sight, our smell, our hearing, and our touch. Our senses let us hear warnings or smell warnings from a skunk. Yeah, animals can also send out warnings uh, with smell. You can send out a warning with sound, like a tornado siren, or you can see a warning, like a stop sign. So we're always communicating through so many different ways. Everybody and every living thing, plants, animals, has a life cycle. There's a life cycle that we have to go through, and here is the life cycle song. You can follow along with me. Birth and growth, reproduce, then death. That's the life cycle living things get. We get larger as we grow older, and metamorphosis happens to caterpillars. And that makes me think of the life cycle of a butterfly. And let's just let's just do that one time real quick here. <clears throat> Start out as an egg. Egg. Larva. Pupa. Adult butterfly. Now, also, there is the life cycle of a frog, uh, which is eggs, tadpole, tadpole, uh, adult frog. So, that, that's some metamorphosis that animals can go through, and ladybugs go through a metamorphosis, grasshoppers go through a metamorphosis where they don't look the same when they become an adult as they did when they were a kid. So, I mean, totally different. You at least kind of look like yourself. I mean, I look like what I looked like when I was a kid, kind of. Now I think I'm prettier, also bigger. But you know, the same thing happens with ladybugs. They, they, the little, uh, little weird larva looking black and orange thing, not as cute as an adult ladybug, seriously. Also caterpillar butterfly, same show. Okay, sometimes you learn how to do something and sometimes you were born knowing how to do it. Like, your parents didn't teach you how to breathe, did they? Okay, but maybe your parents taught you how to ride a bike. Huh. This song is called Learned and Inherited Traits. So here we go. Inherited traits come from your mom or your dad. Like the color of your eyes and the skin that you have. Learn traits are the things that you have been taught, like riding a bike or cleaning a spot. Yeah, sorry I paused on that, but I had to clean a spot right there on the, on the camera. <laughs> okay, now all living things have to eat, and birds change, you know, they don't change, they don't change their beak, but bird beaks are on the right birds because of what they eat. So I have a little rap about bird beaks that we can do together. Thick, short beaks, peck at seeds like chickens and some chickadees. Large, sharp beaks, tear at meat. Aren't vultures and eagles neat? A pelican has a beak like a scoop. His beak's a spoon for fish soup. 
Oh, it would be nice to be a bird uh, that had a beak that matched what I, what I ate, which all bird beaks pretty do. Pretty do? Pretty much do match what they eat. All bird beaks. All bird beaks pretty much do match what they eat. Now I'm on to a song about hibernation, which is everybody's favorite song. Animals hibernate, and really, plants go dormant in the winter. A lot of plants go dormant in the winter, so kind of plants are hibernating in a way. Just because the trees lose their leaves doesn't mean they're dead. Just because a bear is sleeping all winter doesn't mean he's dead. So this is a song about hibernation. Hibernation, time for hibernation. Hibernation, you can do it too. In the winter, where's the bear? Sleeping in his logger lair. Where's the bear? Logger lair. Oh, hibernation, time for hibernation. Hibernation, time to go to sleep. In the winter, where's the frog? Sleeping in a pond or log. Where's the frog? Ponder log. Where's the bear? Log or lair. Oh, hibernation. Time for hibernation. Hibernation. Time to go to sleep. In the winter, where's the snake? In the mud beneath the lake. Where's the snake? In the lake. Where's the frog? Ponder log. Where's the bear? Log or lair. Oh, hibernation. Time for hibernation. Hibernation. Time to go to sleep. In the winter, where's the bat? In a cave is where it's at. Where's the bat? Cave it's at. Where's the snake? In the lake. Where's the frog? Ponder log. Where's the bear? Logger lair. Oh, hibernation. Time for hibernation. Hibernation. Time to go to sleep. I wasn't really hibernating, just in case you thought I was. All right, butterflies, bees, living things that help other living things pollinate. I have a little song about the birth of a butterfly. A mama butterfly lays all her eggs. Out pops a caterpillar crawling on its legs. The caterpillar first is rather thin, but then it eats till it bursts through its skin. After growing nice and big, the caterpillar climbs on a leaf or a twig. It makes a shell where it hangs inside. The shell then cracks and the parts divide. Inside the shell, a change was going on. The form of a caterpillar now is gone. When the shell opens, what comes out? A beautiful butterfly fluttering about. Metamorphosis, friends. Pollination. I'm wearing my bee shirt. Hello, bees. And I tell you what, bees help flowers pollinate. And if po flowers pollinate, they make seeds, which makes fruit and all of that. I mean, it actually makes fruit and then that makes the seeds. So we want butterflies, we want hummingbirds, we want any little insect that gets there in a flower to help pollination happen. Hey, little hummingbird, what are you hauling? Tiny little grains that are known as pollen. Hey, little honeybee, what are you hauling? Tiny little grains that are known as pollen. Thanks, little hummingbird. Thanks, honeybee. By bringing us the pollen, plants grow seeds. Thanks, little honeybee. Thanks, hummingbird. You got the pollen. Now, what's the good word? Pollination. Okay. So living things like animals have to defend themselves. In fact, plants even have to defend themselves. And that's why some plants, you know, might stink or they might have stickers, but living things have to defend themselves because living things don't want to die. I mean, not right away. We all have to die, but we don't want to die like boop, like that. So animals have defenses and they have adapted. Everyone say adapted adapted. They've changed over the years, many, many millions of years, to get these defenses so they can stay alive. Here it is. Sing a song of defense. Sharks use their jaws. Porcupines have quills and bears kick with claws. Moose rely on horns and snakes like to bite. Clams shut up inside their shells so they don't have to fight. Rabbits hop away and birds fly off fast. Octopuses shoot black ink in a blast. Eels give a shock and skunks give a stink. 
Animals defend themselves in more ways than you think.